What's going on guys? Ernest here, back at you again with another video. So, today's video is gonna be about not letting your past define you. The good and the bad, you know, and just, you know, just taking just taking um just taking ownership of where you are you know and and why you are where you are and the reason why I bring this up is because for a long time and I still struggle with it now I blame my mom for my shortcomings and I'm at the age now to where that's not gonna work. You can't do that. You can't continue to blame others for your insecurity. Now there's certain things that, you know, now there's certain certain fears that you may inherit, you know, or just, you know, just things, things get passed down. Things get passed down that you have no control of. But at some point, you have to take accountability for your life and why you're at where you're at. And you have to stop pointing the finger, oh, well, you did this and you didn't give me this. And look, if the people that you're pointing the finger at, if they loved you and they tried the best that they could, what more do you want from them? Seriously, like, ask yourself, what more do you want from them? What more could they have done? Because I can speak for myself. My mom did the best she could to give us, to give us a better life, a better opportunity. It was a better, like, overall, like, stepping stone for Going, going the right way, you know? And it's like, yeah, I can make the argument that, you know, there were certain things that we just didn't get emotionally because she was working all the time. But, you know, I owe how I speak because of my mom, you know? Not stumbling on my words, not stuttering, so he's a really bad stuttering problem. I went through speech therapy and I got hooked on phonics and all that stuff and like I, it rarely happens, you know? And that's just one example of that's one example excuse me. It's one example of what she tried to do to make our lives better. Now, um, I can I can honestly say as well that, you know, there were times where I felt like I was isolated, you know, socially, because we pretty much were picked up from where we were like in the in the beginning, like a small town, small town Alabama, picked up and taken to um, a city in the metro Atlanta area, you know. So from small town to to borderline inner city, uh, it's definitely can be kind of a culture shock. And for a few years, for the first couple of years, man, it, it was it was a struggle. You know what I'm saying? Cause I still Sorry about that video cut off. Um, I struggled for the first couple of years because I was behind academically. Um, I we I was raised also raised um, Jehovah's Witness, so. already it wasn't enough like 
feeling like you're different, but knowing that, that you're different, you know? And as a kid, it kind of, I don't know, it just, it kind of, it made me feel like I just, like what I said wasn't enough, you know what I'm saying? Like it, was, it was always going to be some sort of a, some sort of a, some sort of an issue. You know, I was always on edge. You know, I was even, I would even go as far as say I was like, you know, bullied for a while in school, you know? And eventually I started standing up to him, you know, but it, it, it took a while. It took a while for me to get to that point. Because, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like I always felt like I was like, like I said, I felt like I was I wasn't enough. You know what I'm saying? I felt like it was a part of me that felt like I like I. Man, it was a part of me that felt like I deserved it. It sounds so weird saying that, but it was a part of me that felt like I like deserved to like to be treated differently, you know. And. I, I I guess I I couldn't really like I explain it back then, but it's like I would like. It's like I would purposely like try to be like like lash out, you know. Like I was a quiet kid in school. And with the few friends that I, that I did have, you know, it was just like, I was always kind of distant with them because I just always felt like if I, if I like, if I like, if I, if I told them about me, not that I, I was necessarily like lying, but it's just, I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't say anything. I just wouldn't, wouldn't tell them. You know, I just felt like nobody's going to understand, like, you know, like, you're not enough. Like, you're not enough. You're not enough. You're not enough. That was, like, the constant thing that was, like, in my head. And I would always, like, like dissect things and, like, overanalyze things as to, like, why I'm being treated differently or, like, why, like, why I feel, why I feel, why do I feel so helpless? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, why do I feel so, so helpless? Like, it's gonna just happen, you know? You know, it's, it's, it, I don't know why I felt like that. Well, I, I do know why I felt like that. Because you were different. But being different is not a bad thing. But you know, when you're around kids, kids can be very, kids can be, kid, kids can be vicious, man. I'm just gonna be honest. Kids can be very vicious sometimes. And anything that is outside of what is the norm, they will attack it, you know? And I was just so used to that, that it just made me feel like I couldn't, I couldn't, like, you're just wrong. You're just wrong, you know? Like, I always felt like that. And it's like, I would take that frustration out on people that really didn't deserve it like my mom like my dad you know my my sister like I would just I would just lash out you know and over time like I eventually kind of mellowed out and, and chilled out you know whatever not like I was like 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 this really just causing a fuss but just like in here and sometimes like I would like just just be disrespectful, you know? Just just be disrespectful and like just it just not a good kid. Just not a good kid, you know? Just just not a good kid. Really a spoiled brat. Looking back on it really really just just a spoiled a spoiled little little anxious scared kid and for a long time man I, I walked around like just so like just 
just bitter. Cause I'm in this new place. I don't really have that many friends and like when I try to to connect with people, it was it was like met with rejection. Like it 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 just gave me like it just it gave me like this cloud over my head. Like no matter what you do, like your destiny's already predetermined when it comes to like relationships with people outside of your family. Like it's already determined. You know what I'm saying? Like. You just got you just got a bad luck of the draw when it comes to like being being good at socializing or being good at like talking to people and, and um just being a good friend, just being a good person, being somebody who deserves to have um a friend group that is not uh that's that you can trust. That you can trust and that's not toxic. You know, because for a long time, like, man, people would people would just they would latch on like people who looking back on it really did not have my best intentions at all would just latch on would just latch on to me. Because I guess because like they they saw that, you know, I didn't really talk that much to people and, you know. I had I had things, you know what I'm saying? And it goes back to like my mom like providing just providing a better life for me, you know what I'm saying? Like having a car, you know? Um having having nice clothes, you know? And people would see that and would latch on to that, you know? Like I went to school with this one guy, you know. I don't even know why I would even like trust this guy. This guy, he was one of those he was one of those bullies. He was one of those bullies, but in my head, I thought that okay, if he's being nice to me for these few moments, then I'm I'm good. I'm safe. But this man, he would talk about me. This man stole some of my shoes I would give him shoes and he would tell me he would lie to me and tell me he's gonna give them back never gave them back you know like he came and he would come in my house and eat and eat with us and then like you know what I'm saying in another moment he would be like be mad and angry again you know like it's, it's when I really look back at my life and I really think about the people that I associated with I'm like man you did not have friends you had parasites <laughs> you had parasites and you know maybe that's just like just wanting to feel accepted so badly to the point to where you're willing to like you're willing to let anybody who is willing to be happy or kind to you or not kind nice to you in that moment do whatever, just do anything, you know what I'm saying, like, just, like, you're willing to be, like, because you're in, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, like, well, that's what friends do, that's what friends do, they look out for people, you know, no matter what, they're always cool with people, you know, like, you always got to let stuff go, you just got to be the cool friend, but the reality is, those people are not your friends, if you have people in your life that are only using you, Excuse me. If you have people in your life that are only using you for what you have, those are not your friends, man. Like that's why it's like you have to break out of that that programming of just trying to people please. You have to live for you. Because ultimately that's your opinion of, of who you are is ultimately all you have. So if you spend your life if you spend your life trying to appease other people all the time, you're in for a world of pain. <laughs> you're in for a world of pain. And you are in for a world of just a misunderstanding of why you're here. Because your life is so much bigger than that. Yes, as a man, you are supposed to provide a, a service to a degree to, to you know, um, 
to the world or just on, on a smaller scale to your community and to your family. But takers recognize givers, man. And when you are willing to look past so many red flags just to be accepted, you are in for a world of pain, misunderstanding, loneliness, you know what I'm saying? Like confusion, you know? Um, Because takers recognize givers, man. And it's funny because during that time period, I was just butting hands with my mom, just being a brat, being a brat, you know, like, and then my dad passed away. Like, that was like, man, like, it was, it was, it was crazy, you know, like, it was, it was, it was crazy. And for a while, like, I was like, mentally, like, stuck. For a while, I was like, mentally stuck, because it's like, man, like, I really feel alone now, because like, I can't even talk to my dad, you know what I'm saying? And like, um, not really having that connection with with his side of the family like or having that connection with my mom's side of the family and i know my mom she was just doing the best that she could and looking back on it i i, I really i love her dearly for that and i i really wish i didn't give her such a hard time but i can't take it back because i did it and it's not like i was like out here like committing crimes or anything like that but just like i could have been i could have been a better person to be around Cause I didn't open up because I felt like nobody would listen and and that's besides the point. That's besides the point. I'm not gonna make excuses for myself because I, I you just wasn't a pleasant person to be around. And now um I'm trying to essentially pick up the pieces, you know, and just, you know, move on from that, you know like move on from that like mentally you know and just like stop holding myself hostage as to you know where I, I was back then you know like because I, I do deserve to be successful I do deserve to believe in myself and whatever it is I want to do you know honestly I feel like I deserve that but um and you deserve it too. Whoever, whoever, whoever's watching this video, you deserve it too. If you're willing to put in the work, you know, if you're willing to put the, put the work in, if you're willing to scrape your knee a little bit, if you're willing to not be liked by by people, you know, because you can't realistically, you can't you can't live your life trying to always appease other people. You gotta live for you. You have to live for you. You gotta choose you. And don't hurt people. Don't hurt people, man. The people that care about you, the people that truly care about you. Your mom, your dad, you know, your grandmama, um, your family, you know. Um, like, you got to do it for you, you know. Like, if you have a good relationship with your mother, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't treat them badly, you know. Treat them good because they love you. And they would do anything for you to make you be successful, and believe in yourself, man. Believe in yourself. Don't use your past as an excuse to not believe in yourself. Because I did that for a long time. I did that for a long time. You know, go get the help. You know, go go get the help, man. You know, pray about it, you know. Um, go to therapy, you know. But don't stay... Um, you got to break the chains mentally. You got to break these chains mentally of these barriers of what you think is possible for you or what you think is not possible for you because of how you were brought up. Break those chains. All right. That's enough random for me today. You guys have a blessed one. Continue to do the work and um, break those chains, man. Like and subscribe for more. Peace.